welcome back. Uh, well, a bit's happened since we last uh, chatted. Uh, got my baton sanded down, um, sorted out, <coughs> got the alternator tightened up on the engine. Uh, and then importantly, I've been up here up the mast getting the lashing sorted out at the top of the mast. So if you look up there, up uh, here, this is, oh, where are my fingers going again? There we go. This is the main halyard. It's a three to one. And at the top here is where there's a new lashing now. And then over on the front of the mast over there, those are the uh, halyards for the spinnakers. So that's been about an hour and a half, uh, but it is absolutely gorgeous up here. There's LM, LM wind power behind us. And then around this way, that's all CMN over there. And then off towards Cherbourg port and then going over to where the cruise ships are and then out here towards the outer harbour and you can see the fortifications there for uh, well for the second world war really but I think they're even earlier than that the, the name Cherbourg I believe comes from something to do with Caesar's camp like this is literally where the Romans stood and looked across at the uh, at the UK and uh, worked out their plan um, so we got the the lashings done on the kites, we've got the lashings done on the halyards. Um, I'm now at a point where I'm just about to come down. This is my rig for uh, climbing up and down the mast. Basically, there's a two to one halyard. The braking strain on the line for the uh, halyards is 10,000 kilos, it's a two to one. Um, it then connects to a, an old main halyard, which also has a braking strain of 10,000 kilos, which is in blocks which hold like eight or 9,000 kilos, which then goes to a full body harness which has then got, uh, I go into a, a descender here. I came up on shunts, which are kind of one way. Let me just try and show you. These are my uh, stirrups that I use to uh, stand up at the top of the rig. And they've got this little device on the top here. When it's in the up position, it can move. And then when the weight comes onto it, it locks off. Uh, but these are ubiquitous now. They're all over the place. They're great for going up the line. So I have a, a two to one purchase, this block and this block. It's uh, terminated at the top. It goes down and up and back to me. So I'm um, vastly reducing my body weight. And then normally when I'm going up, it has one of the shunts attached in here. So I can just pull hand over hand over hand. The safety line goes around the mast. And if I was at sea doing this, then I'd have another shunt going onto another halyard. And that stops you from spinning around. This is the safety. The other line would be the to stop you from swinging around the rig, which would be a, is a huge problem when you're at sea. So massively built stuff. Actually, the weakest part of the system are the carabiners, which only hold 2,200 kilos, and I weigh like 90. Um, so I'm uh, just gonna get my stirrups off this line. Uh, everything's good at the top of the rig. So now I gotta go down, I gotta get the jib on, which requires hanking the jib on and then hoisting it with one of the spinnaker halyards and then coming back up the rig to the rig to the second spreader where the force stay attaches and then lashing the sail onto the top of the roller gear. They're not roller uh, reefed sails, they're roller furled sails. They're not for um, putting half in, half out, all that kind of jibe. You just, the, the system is there to unroll them. Like on Challenger, we have actual reefing uh, jib, right? We can make it smaller like you can on cruising boats. On this, it's just open or closed. They're too powerful to be messing around with that stuff. Um, the thing here is that, yeah, whilst it's nice and calm and, and almost windless like this, it's perfect to put the sail up, go and get um, back attached to the mast, come up the rig to the second spreader, all of which requires a lot of pull-ups, as you can imagine, um, lash the thing on at the top, and then go back down, retrieve my halyard, and roll the sail up, and then I've got a head saw. Um, what I'm thinking is I really wanted to leave today on the high tide, but as you can see, the tide is pretty high at the moment. The pontoons are... Have a look at our little pontoon down there. Remember there's like 25 feet difference between the pontoon and the edge of the dock when it's low tide. We're at springs at the moment. I think we're actually a little bit more than springs. I think we're 105% springs. So um, what that means in this part of the world is that out there uh, in the channel, when the tide's running with you, you've got three or four knots under you, which is a big deal. When it's against you, you've got three or four knots against you, which is a big deal. So. Um, I would really like to go today, like right now it's perfect, but I think that I would like to get the sail on. I think I'd, if I was bending the mainsail on tonight, would be awesome, like reefs in and halyard on and battens in and all the problems sorted out. 
and I would like if I can to go tonight and get all my clothes washed because you know I'm a bit of a feral chap at the best of times but when I've been working here for this is Wednesday and I arrived on well I, I got going on Tuesday so I've been here like t I'll be here 10 days by tomorrow 10 days hard yakka I would rather have um, clean clothes to be able to set off for 10 days at sea um, I want to get two more cans of fuel so two more cans of fuel go to the laundry uh, bend the main salon and I want to get a compass bulb it's a tiny little compass bulb and time to go back down and uh, get on with the next part of this I'm back down on the deck now and it's time to get the uh, the jib out of its bag and uh, have a see what that's all about so we've got the Cuban pipe there's two sets of sails with this right now one is the Cuban fiber set which um, I think are from the 2004 Vendee and then the other set is a set of um, 3DL North sails with uh, white taffeta on which are from the 2006 uh, Velux 5 Oceans race. The good thing about that is that the people who are using these sails are professional sailors and they're only using them for, you know, three or four months, maybe some training as well. So it should be in very good condition. Uh, look, Temenos, Transat UK, 2004, May 2004. All right. Well, that to me does not look like it's in bad condition. It looks very good condition. So we get this out and get it on. It's a bit tricky to be videoing everything all the time. So let's just uh, let's have a see what it looks like and whether we've got a winner here or not. Okay. I just had to show you a picture of this. Look at this. The sails are going up like it may seem like a small thing like yeah of course the sails are going up that's what you're here for but there's a difference sometimes between um believing you can do something and then realizing you're actually doing it um almost a trepidation with the fact that is this really happening like firstly these sails these cuban fiber sails are in amazing condition unless there's some like major rip or stain or someone's graffiti the big penis on them somewhere like these are awesome sales i cannot imagine they look much better than this when they came out of the packet the thing i wanted to show you here look how it's attached like i'm used to doing this and they often have soft um, soft hanks like a little bit of webbing a buckle and then you boom boom on it goes this has got a zip this tube here look there's a zip and then there are just these little ties once in a while just to I guess hold it in case the zip ever busted out but I started doing the bottom first which is how you'd normally do it get it all down here and then hoist it up and I realized hang on this is not working at all this is all wrong I was making them way too tight I had no plan at all so I started at the top and you need to put this sail on like this like there's no putting it on the floor and then hoisting up it's got to go up as it's going up so I'm going to crack on because, you know, we've got to make hay while the sun shines, while the wind's still good here. Isn't it awesome? Awesome, awesome, awesome. We nearly got a boat. Well, there's the bar flare back in. That's the boat I arrived on nine days ago. So I saw it come in. I saw the high tide. I've just got my head still up. Uh, I think the objective's got to be to leave as that arrives tomorrow. But how cool is this? Look at this. Jib's up, she's got her voice back. Part of me's like, oh, don't shake the sail. Part of me's like, F it, why not? 12 years sat silent. Let it all hang out for a minute, eh? Okay, well that's the sail lashed on. It's temporary for now, because I'm not sure about the exact tension it's required. Here's the furling uh, unit at the top. It's lashed on. The halyard's off, I stupidly forgot to bring a line with me to help me pull the halyard down. So I need to come back up anyway to check this, to redo it, to just check the top of the sail and to put new elastics on the back stay. So I'll be back one more time, so I'll get the halyard at that point. But yeah, all done. Now, 
Time to go and fill this sucker up. Okay, so I'm just back from uh, town. Just been uh, walking in. I just did the calculation. It's uh, it's five kilometers every time I walk there and walk back. So there's no wonder that <laughs> I'm a bit tired at the moment with uh, all the work I'm doing plus the walking. But I'm getting fit, so that's good. Um, <clears throat> so we're into the last evening, and uh, that means it's time for the last job. I've got to go up the rig and get the halyard. I want to do a final check. I want to put some new elastic on the back stays. That would be no more than an hour. <clears throat> and then it's the mainsail. <laughs> the mainsail is, well, we've got two mainsails. We've got this one here, which is a Cuban fiber mainsail, which is from the 2004 Vendee Globe. And over there, we have um, a North 3DL mainsail with uh, taffeta on, which would be from the 2006 Velux 5 Ocean. So that certainly is the newer sail with uh, probably the newer gear on it and it may even tie up with the battens that I've got but I'm very very tempted to put the Cuban fiber sail on just to put the miles on this sail rather than that sail um, it'll be the sail that the boat was sold with and the boat was only sold the year after the Vendee Globe um, this would be the the main sail that it was sold with um, so I don't think it's, there's anything that much wrong with it I'm hesitant though because it is unbelievably heavy and I have to deal with a lot of heavy sails. This has got to be 50% again heavier than the Volvo 60 sail, um, than Challenger sail. So um, that's not an issue. We just have to use a bit of brains with what we're doing. But um, yeah, like <laughs> I could really do without this. The other thing I've got is uh, the boom bag, which is here, which is this thing, which is attached to the lazy jacks that go up there. Oh, up there to the mast. On my Open 60 on Spartan, it was a releasable element. I think I made it releasable because you need to be able to get the sail on and off. I'm the kind of person that will be repairing stuff and messing around with stuff. And if there's a couple of issues that can happen where you hoist and get battens caught in lazy jacks and blah, blah, blah. And it's just easy to be able to release them. But this is not set up that way. So um, it's got to work out. I need to be able to basically drop this side of the bag down and then get the mainsail stretched out in this area and then uh, start feeding the foot on. Um, I may move the boat, well, I'm almost tempted to say I'll move the boat down to the other dock where it's a nice, clean, uh, wooden um, surface, but actually I don't want to be in a situation where I hoist this mainsail <laughs> anywhere other than up. I do not want to be putting it down on the dock laying it out cleanly and then put it onto the boom that's so much work so the wind is very very light again this evening it's working where it's coming from it's coming from over here it's coming from like 45 degrees on the starboard bow so um i could actually put the put the runner forward oh then the main would be on the wrong side well no, i suppose there's two things here there's getting it on the boom and then there's getting it up so uh yeah, the other thing, of course, is we've got the battens, which are over here, which are all cleaned now. And I just went and bought, well, not bought, actually. I went to Axe Sales in Cherbourg, and they were unbelievably helpful. And uh, they had some old batten hanging around, and they gave me five, uh, these are the anti-flutter battens that I know I need. And because I've seen the diagram, that's the other reason why I like this sale, because I've seen the diagram, which has got... Uh, all the batten lengths on it and I know that the longest batten I've got is 30 centimeters too short but then I'm thinking okay I'll just put that the next batten up and then I'll go up from there and basically the bottom of the sail the first reef which I won't be using won't have a batten in so it's fine I know that these will fit um, and I know that the flutter battens on it are 750 mil so they gave me this and cut it all and everything for five euros in fact they weren't going to charge me but I kind of pushed it on them so Axe Sales and Sherborg are very nice people um, right so I think what I'm gonna do first I'm gonna unpack all of the last of the stuff I managed to get the compass light that I wanted I managed to get the uh, four deck light that I wanted oh I managed to get a little fuse for the stereo which the stereo didn't work when I got here and I was like dreadfully disappointed because I was so cheery having the little stereo one and everything um, I discovered just the fuse had gone but it's uh, in the um, those in-car entertainment, those ice fuses are small weird ones. And I went to the um, to the uh, chandlery, diffusion, askatili, it's on the bag, hang on. <laughs> I better find out what this stuff is. 
I went to this place. Oh, Ascatillage Diffusion. Okay, they're also very nice people. Chandler right here in Cherbourg, and they had they had this tiny little compass light, which is like no bigger than uh, like a, a a tiny little seed of some like an apple seed. They had these tiny little weird fuses. They had like everything I needed. Plus they had a valve, which I've been looking for forever for Challenger's um, uh, fuel manifold. God, I've got too many boats in my head. Okay, just this boat. So I'm gonna get, uh, had something to eat. I managed to put all my clothes to the laundry. So I now smell like a normal person. That's good. That'll make me go faster and safer. Uh, yeah, I think we've got everything. I've moved all the batteries which I'd taken off the boat and put on the dock. I've now found out where to get rid of those, so that's good. Um, the only thing I have to get is I have to top up the water by like two liters or something, which is nothing. Uh, and I have to get, I think, two, two tanks of fuel, which is 40 liters. So the gas station's about a kilometer away, so I'll just walk over there and, uh, and get them. And then... We are ready. I've got fuel transfer pump, like this crazy. I have never seen one like this. I was trying to work it out. I, what I've always used on this boat is just those little red squishy top things with the two white uh, tubes. It's like a siphon. I used them a lot in Hong Kong. They're good, but they're very slow. Look at this. This is like five euros or something. It's got a big bellows in there, and that orange thing goes onto the top of the can that you are sucking fuel from. And it's got a little, uh, oh, you can't do that very well. It's got a little tap thing there. And then you just push the bellows together, push the ends together and it, don't know if it's gonna be good, but. <laughs> got toilet roll, that's quite useful. And I got some Haribo. So if we've got toilet roll and Haribo, we can get literally anywhere. So I'm gonna get myself just sorted out now. I think probably my instinct is to get on with the mainsail as soon as possible whilst the wind is down, make hay while the sun is shining. I'm tempted to go at the rig to kind of get it out of the way, but I can go at the rig in windy conditions or not windy conditions, but I can only do the main like this. It's so cool, like, like the wind's perfect for this tonight and it was awful for it last night. And like everything's just rolled really, really well with this project. I really enjoyed it. I'm tired, but you're gonna do it if you're working 16, 17 hours a day, but I'm tired and I'm happy. And that's very, very cool. The, what this boat needs, it needs to go. Now you never seek out storms. You do not deliberately head into storms. However, they are a 10% aspect of being at sea. And I would be happy to pass safely through a little something or other and clean this deck off. The salt water is gonna be like Ah, oh, like a mud bath for a hot hippo for this boat, I tell you. She's had rain on her for 12 years and no salt water at all. And even though like wooden boats have to have salt water, like it's part of the engineering of them, they have to have it. These boats, mm, there are things that corrode, but like everything's worked out so it doesn't happen. But the, um, the green chinny and the lichen and the algae and all that stuff, like it's not cool. So yeah, I think it's time to get some salt water on it and get some strong, Atlantic sun on it and uh, let's go sailing. Mm. Okay. Right, it's about 10 seconds later and uh, I just finished that little segment and then walked over to the boom. I was just looking at it and like, man, how am I gonna get this, this boom bag off? Every time I ask a question on this boat, every time I think, man, I found something these guys did not do well, I always get an absolute education in what's going on. This boat was set up by Dominic Wav, who was a Whitbread sailor who sailed on Intrium Just Eater in 93. Um, you know, he knew what he was doing. He had this boat built. Uh, Kajiro knew what he was doing and had Josh Hall with him who knew what he was doing. And there's a lot of people involved in this that know what they're doing. Ah, look at this. So this part here, oh, this goes up there. And not that you can see, but it goes up and over in this arc here. So when this gets longer, when this line is released, and this gets longer, suddenly everything can be taken back to the mast. And of course, now I realize what I'm talking about. That's what these are. These lines here, which have been 
they're, they're yellow, but I've, uh, they were green like three or four days ago. They are the lines which control the lazy bag. Perfect. So it's gonna be a lot easier than I thought because I, <laughs> I think I just thought like it was the end of the campaign, so they just slung it back together, tied it up. Yeah, okay, just go aloft and tie it off. It's fine, don't worry about it. Like, no, they didn't. They put this bow to bed. Absolutely right. Okay, so, so it's actually very easy. So now we've just got the 200 kilo mainsaw to move. 